Thank you. It is a blessing and a privilege and a joy to be able to bring the Word of God to you. I'm thankful that the Bible says that it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And that's how I got saved. A man of God preached to me, and he didn't hold back. He didn't sugarcoat it. He preached to me the whole gospel. He said, except you repent, you all likewise will perish. And he said, if you don't turn from your wicked ways, repent of your sins, and come to the Lord Jesus Christ as you are, that you'll die in sin and go to hell. He died for you. And that's what the man of God told us all the time. He would preach the same message about repent or perish. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and he'll save you. And that's exactly how I came to him. I didn't try to sneak around the back door. I didn't try to find a side door because I knew better. I had been preached to. But you see, this world is in chaos and confusion. And there's so many different people that have their ways about how they're going to make it into heaven. But the Bible says that I know that nobody's going to be justified by their deeds. No flesh is going to be justified. We all have the same flesh. You may be a different color than I am. You may have a different nationality than I am. But we all got to make it into heaven the same way. And that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father but by me. There's no other way to work your way into heaven. It's God's way, and that's through the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. He's the one that paid the sin debt. In the beginning, Adam and Eve fell to sin. They transgressed God's commandment. They transgressed God's law. And see, there had to be a substitute. God promised it. Even in that day, He said a conquering seed would come, and He would bruise the serpent's head. That's what the one that deceived Eve was the serpent, the old serpent. That was the devil in the beginning. He was there to deceive. And now he's going forth deceiving still today. And he's got you deceived. If you're not saved, he's got you deceived with something. It may not be what my sins were. It may not be what another man's sins are. But nevertheless, you're born in sin and shaping in iniquity. And if you've never had an opportunity where you called out to him and he gave you an altar of repentance and you came to him just like you were and you called out to him and begged his mercy and asked him to save you and you meant it with all your heart, if you've never had that chance, if you've never come to him like that, then I don't think you're saved. You see, that's how you must come to him. You must have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means if you call upon him out of your heart, not with your lips, because plenty of people call out to him with their mouth. They say Jesus this and Jesus that, and they think they're saved. They've had some so-called minister that's told them if they just come to God and they just uh, repeat a prayer after the preacher, then they're saved. But you see, that's not the way it goes. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says it's with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. When you believe from the heart and you really repent of your sins, you can't help but tell somebody about what he's done for you. You see, you're not going to so-called get saved and then just go back to wallowing in the mire. That's like that sow, that pig that goes back to wallowing in the mire after you clean her up. That's what the Word of God says. The dog that returns unto his vomit, the nature never changed. That's what the parable is saying right there. That's what the proverb said. And you see many people get an easy believism or they may get baptized in the water and they do good for a couple of days. They may even do better for a week or two or months or maybe even a year. They're doing better. But you see, if their inside never changed, if their nature never changed by putting that divine nature with God, God does when he saves you if you're, you don't have that divine nature within you you'll go back right into wallowing in the mire playing in the slop that's exactly what I did for 23 years until I got saved I was 23 years old when I finally quit wallowing in the mire when I finally quit running from what God had for me he had the best for me he's got the best to offer he doesn't want you to die in your sin and go to hell he wants to save you that's why Jesus came to die for you not just for me, but for everybody. You see, he formed you in your mother's womb. He, in the book of Jeremiah, God told Jeremiah, he said, before I knew, before you came forth, before anything, I knew you. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I was there. I saw you. And that's what he's saying to you today. He sees you. He knows exactly what you're going through. You may be going through a hardship. You may have a good life. You may be going through things that other people have never been through. But you see, he's the same Lord. He's rich unto all that will call upon him. And if you call upon him with all your heart, 
repent of your sins and come to him just like you are. Don't bargain with him like I did. That's what I did before I got saved. I said, Lord, I want to be saved, but not right now. I want to wait. That was my, my good old motto was not right now, maybe later. And that's exactly what I kept doing. I kept pushing it off to a more convenient season. But you see, this flesh never has a convenient season. Your will is never convenient. You see, you can push it off for as long as you want. I meet people all the time up in age and they're still not saved and they're just going to continue to wait if nobody brings the gospel to them. That's just the way this flesh is. It dies hard. You see, we think we've got things figured out. When you're young, you think you have the world ahead of you. You have your whole life ahead of you. And most of the time you do. But you can look around, look on the news, look around you, people in your family that have tragically died and they didn't even make 30. I'll tell you, we live in a wicked world. There's violence on every corner. You need to know about where your soul is going to spend eternity and you need to know right away you don't need to procrastinate like I did I was 16 years old when the word of the Lord came to me when the man of God was preaching it dealt with my heart and I could have gotten saved he made the altar call and I know I could have came to the altar and I could have poured out my heart to God and gotten saved but I didn't at that time the devil popped my mind right away and said, why don't you wait a little while? Why don't you live it up? You see, your friends are having all this fun. You're going to miss out on your teenage years. You're going to miss out on the fun that you're going to have with your friends. But you see, none of those things were fun. They were. I just enjoyed the pleasure of sin for a season. And that's all it brings to you is a little pleasure to the flesh. It does a little, uh, little bit for your flesh, but it never satisfies the soul. The soul is the part that's disconnected from God. God gave us all a conscience he gave us all a soul the bible says that he breathed into adam's nostrils and he became a living soul and every man and woman that's born into this world has a living soul you've got a conscience to know god he will give you those opportunities to know him but it's up to you he never forces us he loves us with a perfect love a pure love and a love that's beyond my comprehension he loves us so much that he gives us a choice love never forces you to do anything love isn't evil and treated it doesn't bring any harm to you love gives you a choice love is wonderful and that's the only thing that he gives he gives a perfect love to you if you come to him he puts that love inside of you you see i have a love for people that's supernatural i had nothing to do with it when i came to the lord just like i was brought my broken heart to him and I prayed out with all my heart. I didn't care who was there. I didn't care what was going on. I knew that I needed salvation. I was by my bedside praying. I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm holding on to, but I don't want to go to sleep. I don't want to live another moment without you because I could die in my sleep and go to hell. I was that determined. I was that serious. And the next morning, I had already fallen asleep. I woke up the next morning. I was thankful to wake up. But I'll tell you, I wasn't saved yet. I had a, a pit in the bottom of my stomach. I knew that I wasn't saved yet because the man of God said, when you get saved, a change happens on the inside. He said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away and all things become new. I was waiting on that to happen. I was waiting on the change that the man of God told me about, and I continued to pray. I didn't care what was going on. I went on into work, but I continued to pray. I said, Lord, I don't care what happens today. I'm getting saved today. I don't care what happens, Lord. I'll pray this whole day, all 24 hours, Lord. I want to be saved above everything else. And when I poured out my heart before him, I conf confessed all my sins before him, and I poured out my heart, that broken heart and contrite spirit that he wants from you. When I finally gave it all to him, he saved me just like I was. And when I got saved, a change happened on the inside. I no longer had that old nature that I talked about. I no longer wanted to go back to wallowing in the mire. He gave me a new heart that day, a new change in my life. No longer I turned over a new leaf. This is something that he did. This was supernatural, a transaction. He took that spiritual knife, the word of God. He cut out that old heart of stone that I had, and he placed within me a heart of flesh to love him with. He put his nature within me, his divine nature, and everybody that gets saved gets that same divine nature it's that holy spirit that he puts inside of you that will direct you and guide you and give you understanding it'll be with you even unto the end of the world he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother and i don't care what may come in this life i know i can depend on him i can go to my prayer closet if you please i can pray riding down the road i can pray anywhere i can commune with him because of that precious holy spirit that he put within me when he saved me and I've been a new creature ever since. That very day, 
I hit the ground running. I began to pray. I began to study my Bible. Everybody I saw, I saw them differently. I said, Lord, save them. I want them to have what you just gave me. And that's my desire every day. I want that to grow and grow. I want everybody to be saved. I don't want anybody to miss out on eternal life because your soul is eternal. God gave you an eternal soul. When he breathes into your nostrils, you have an eternal soul. And you're going to have to answer the question, what will you do with Jesus? What are you going to do with him? There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. What are you going to do with the one that paid the price for you? Are you going to receive him or are you going to reject him? There is no in between. You can't be on the fence about it. You must be sure that you're saved and born again. And you can say, how am I going to be sure? What do I need to do? All you got to do is come to him just like you are. When you hear the word of God, you may hear this uh, broadcast. When you hear it and God speaks to your heart and calls your name and says, it's your turn. Don't hasten. Don't wait. Come to him exactly when he bids you to come. Because that's what I did the second time. The first time, I rejected him. He said, come to me and I'll save you. And I pushed him off. I said, no, Lord, not right now. I want to wait until later. And those, those years that I wasted, those years that I waited were the worst years of my life. You talk about misery, you talk about depression, you talk about just uh, pain and anguish, and all because of my foolishness. It's not because God's fault, it was my fault. I'm the one that pushed him off. He was right there waiting for me. All those years that I was running, he was still there. His mercy was still there extended towards me, but I didn't come to him until I was 23 years old. And the best thing that can happen to anybody in this world happened to me when I got saved and born again. And it is the greatest gift of all of mankind. Anything that you can receive in this life, it surpasses that a billion times and by infinity. I'll tell you, this is wonderful. It's a precious gift. Somebody could give me all the money in all the world, and I still wouldn't trade them for this great salvation because that money's going to burn up. That money is temporal. I'm talking about something eternal, something that's everlasting to everlasting. I know when I die <clears throat> that I'm going to go into the presence of God. My spirit is going to be with him because of what he's done for me, not because I'm special, not because I'm a preacher, not because of anything else, but because of what he's done for me in my life because he has saved me and bought me with his own blood. I've been bought with a price, by the way, by the precious blood of Christ. And that same blood was shed for you personally. He's a personal savior. He's not a savior that's just a fairy tale. He's personal and he wants a personal relationship with you. He's the one that created you. So of course he wants a personal relationship with you. He wants you to come back to him. You're the one that's left him. He hasn't left you. He's merciful to you. He's long suffering to you. And if you've ever heard the gospel before and somebody's praying for you and you hear that word of God again, and it comes to you a second time or maybe a third time. Don't hasten. Just come to him just like you are. Don't push him off any longer. He wants to save you. He wants to give you eternal life so that when you do die, because you are going to die, as in Adam, we all die. It's appointed on a man once to die, and after this, the judgment. You don't want to face him in judgment without Christ, without representation. Jesus will be there right by your side if you're saved and born again. And he'll witness and he'll testify to the Father and say, this one's yours and this one's mine. And that's a wonderful thing to know that I'm going to be with him forever and ever and ever. And you'll have the same gift if you come to him just like you are. I see my time is quickly gone. Pray for us in Jesus' name. Amen.